Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is a morning market prep video for October 11th, 2022. Well, yesterday turned out to be a great big giant chop fest, kind of what we were expecting. As I had mentioned in yesterday's uh, morning prep, we're just kind of in that wait and see mode. Um, and unfortunately, we've got another day of that. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Tuesday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thanks so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. You know, we've got some issues going on here this morning with bond yields surging up. We're also seeing the dollar strengthen here this morning, um, creating more of those pressures here in the overall market. But we are currently trying to bounce off of some of our overnight lows, trying to get a little bit of uh, pre-market pump coming in here. But as you can see, if we look at our diamonds here, this pre-market candle, uh, possible gap down where we were lower than yesterday's low in the pre-market. Still seeing a little bit of a pressure here um, right now. Dow expecting a move down about 100 points as, as I record this. But as you can see, obviously we've got some um, issues out here in the market to deal with. Clearly the downtrend is still in play. And unfortunately we've given up price support levels here in the chart. And um, with the open today below that little price support level, well, we really wanna be watching for that possibility if those bears find inspiration that we could easily test the low of the year here on the diamonds. Now, if the bulls can find some inspiration, look for that resistance level up in here to potentially provide that stopping point for those bulls. And honestly, it's gonna be difficult to find inspiration for either side today. We're likely going to be very sensitive to the new cycle. Geopolitical tensions in uh, Ukraine and Russia continue to grow. Um, we um, uh, kicked, um, uh, kicked China with a new, um, new regulations on chips. I'm not saying that it was, shouldn't have been done or that it wasn't the right thing to do. Um, that's not my decision, but obviously um, China is now uh, suggesting there will be a retaliation of some kind. So who knows what that means um, as we move forward here in the market. But obviously these tensions are creating significant pressures here in the market. And then, of course, uh, beyond that, we have the issues, the worries, the concerns about um, earnings and the the potential that um, we could continue to receive earnings warnings, earnings downgrades um, as we move forward into the beginning of um, the kickoff here of fourth quarter um, earnings reports on Thursday. Let's take a look at our technicals here in the chart. Now our technicals here certainly have not improved. Um, um, uh, clearly our 50 day moving average is in decline. Our 34 our 20 emas are lower our price is underneath the 8 exponential and our 200 is crossed over the 50. pretty difficult situation here in there technically um, to look at that as bullish at all there could of course be a little bit of hope that we're oversold and we could get a relief rally but with little to be inspired by, um, that may be a bit of a stretch. So watch that carefully. If we take a look at our SPY, very much the same situation. SPY has a, um, obviously more of the tech sector stocks in it. And what we're seeing here is not only have we given up this support, but we're running very close here. As a matter of fact, if um, that morning uh, low is tested, we could have set a new low here on the SPY um, today. So watch that closely. If that support holds, however, that would be um, a possible inspiration for a little bit of rally. If we can hold in this area, then look for a rally back test 
to see if that's going to hold resistance, if the downtrend's gonna to continue to hold. Keeping in mind, we have um, stronger, more significant resistance levels above that. So watch that close. Again, technicals here are not good. If we take a look at our QQQ, well, our QQQ did the dirty deed yesterday, breaking to a new um, annual low. Um, dragging us lower as the semiconductors um, had a pretty rough day yesterday with the new regulations um, uh, being rolled out there on uh, chip stocks. So watch that closely. As a matter of fact, it really had a major effect on Taiwan last night. Taiwan um, um, declined uh, 4% with um, TSMC falling um, 8% uh, by the end of the day. So pretty rough on the chip sector um, out there right now. Now, if we can find reason for some bullishness, we'll have to look right in here. There's a little bit of price resistance right in here, obviously, that's been forming up. And as you can see, the stronger level would be above that. Um, of course, we're still in a downtrend. And by the way, this is officially um, following through the downtrend with the lower high and now the lower low. So watch, um, watch that closely. If we were to pull this chart back, you can see um, there's a little tiny bit of price support right in here. But if that does not hold, um, well, we've got a pretty sharp decline that could occur um, if um, traders kind of throw up their hands and capitulate here in the market. If we take a look at our IWM, IWM um, has been the strongest of the indexes out there. It has not made a new low on the year, and we're still trying to hang in there. But unfortunately, yesterday, we kind of gave up a little bit of price support in here um, with that selling. So now we would look, um, if those bears find inspiration, we would look for a test maybe down here toward that recent low. Um, if the bulls find inspiration, well, maybe we pop right back up through there, and we'd look for some price resistance resistance in the chart, maybe along this area, or um, even just a little bit higher if they could get moving to the upside. So watch that close. Um, let's take a look at our uh, VIX. Our VIX, well, um, rallied up pretty strongly yesterday and then faded back because we had a little inspiration somehow, somewhere, to um, rally right at the end of the day. But uh, by and large, it was just a chop fest. If we take a look, um, I'm gonna go back here to the diamonds just for a second, go to a 15 minute chart, and you can see it was just choppy, 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 choppy all over the place. So um, didn't really have a whole lot of inspiration and to move, and that's understandable because there really wasn't anything on the earnings or economic calendar to do that. It's just kind of the worry of what comes next in the um, inflation inflationary data and then of course the beginning of um, earnings season. Now our trend uh, remains to the upside here in the chart and we do have resistance right up in this area that we'll want to be watching because I've mentioned this before if we break through this area up here this is where we run the risk of um, capitulation and that's where institutional computers could really start to sell off we could see a mom and pop investor calling in on their 401k saying just get me out of this uh, mess and we catch that capitulation event in the market now so far uh, I'm kind of thinking it won't happen just yet. That's just my guess. It won't happen just yet. I think we're going to have to experience some of the pain of earnings season before that may be start start picking up so watch that carefully um, obviously some support level in here if we can pull back and we'll want to watch this area up here if those uh, bears find inspiration let's take a look at our t2122 now if there is hope of a rally here in the market it would be t2122 and you can see yesterday we actually hooked our t2122 a little bit trying to lift back up just a little bit from this oversold condition but obviously it didn't really produce a whole lot in the market there for that warm and fuzzy feeling um, but we'll want to watch that closely today if those bulls can find some inspiration and start fight, fighting back a little bit then we certainly have plenty of upside room to move we do want to make note of the fact though that we also have 
some downside opportunity that we could continue to move down. And one of the things when um, overnight lows uh, come into the market, we can't rule out the possibility of a retest of those overnight lows um, in, in uh, the during the daily session. So just, um, you know, be on your toes and be very, very focused here on price action. Let's take a look at our T2108. T2108 um, kind of flat yesterday, really didn't gain any ground, really didn't lose any ground. Um, we're still struggling under this um, downtrend here. We've still got lots of resistance in this chart above 21% um, of the stocks holding above their 40 day moving average. Uh, T2107 also just kind of nothing a little teeny tiny clip up here yesterday a little tiny improvement 22 percent of the stocks holding above their 200 day moving average but it's pretty tough to build uh, a major bullish case in here yet um, with the downtrends and resistance we see in the chart a lot of pressure here overall now our t2101 i'm going to skip right by t2101 this morning and the reason i'm going to do that is if we look real closely here at these charts we didn't get much volume here throughout the day as that selling ensued it was right at the last few moments of the day we got a little surge that popped us up so that we could even come up near that average here on the diamonds. But if we look at our SPY, our SPY was weak. Our QQQ was weak in volume. So we didn't have that major momentum um, on that downside move. It was just that choppy creep to the downside um, that kind of plugged us yesterday. And unfortunately, when we look at today's economic calendar, you're gonna see that there's a very good chance that continues today. Um, sorry, I just picked up that extra window there. I apologize. There we go. Let's take a look here on our economic calendar for today. What do we got going on? Well, we got little and nothing. We've got NFIB Small Business Optimism Index, which does not move the market as a, as a general rule. Some bond announcements. Um, who, who would be surprised the, that we have Fed speakers? They, these folks just can't stop talking here recently. Um, and then we've got three months, six month bond auction and a three year bond auction later on this afternoon. So really not much out there to inspire us unfortunately we are seeing bonds spike up this morning with the two-year bond surging pretty strongly we had that reprieve yesterday with the bond market being closed but they're they're making up ground here with a vengeance um, this morning uh, keep in mind that what we have here on thursday what we're all waiting for is how this ppi data is going to come out the cpi data is going to come out lots of um, angst and worry about those numbers and particularly with us seeing gas prices surging back to the upside um, we've actually we've heard like Mohammed el arian and folks like that saying he believes that the core inflation rate has actually moved up despite the efforts of the fomc so watch that closely um, also remember we've got an fomc um, uh, minutes coming out tomorrow so that might give us maybe a little bit of insight into what the Fed is thinking as we move forward. So watch carefully for those tomorrow. But today, probably another watch, wait and see. We're gonna be sensitive to news events. We're gonna be sensitive to these geopolitical things. We're gonna be sensitive to any earnings and warnings or announcements. Um, um, uh, so keep a close eye on that. Then let's take a look at our earnings calendar for today. Our earnings calendar, we have five companies that are confirmed that are going to report today but unfortunately they're uh, three of the companies uh, barely trade volume and um, are not necessarily notable so the only two that i could really add to um, the notable list today on the earnings report is azz um, keep an eye on azz you can see it looks like it may have disappointed this morning on its report looking uh, quite a bit lower here in the pre-market and then um, PNFP um, um, is the only other notable on the day so keep an eye on that we'll see how these earnings play out um, let's take a look 
at some socks that could be setting up but before we do that guys if you could do me this quick favor if this is the first time you've seen these videos if you could please click that subscribe button on youtube and then also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time i post a video and i believe me i know it when the market is like this the gloom and doom over the market makes it difficult to even participate and and be involved um, in a channel like this but i certainly certainly want to thank everyone who does take the time to click those subscribe buttons click the the bell icon so that you'll be notified every time i post a video you the, the continuing to click those thumbs up buttons and leaving comments you guys are awesome i got kind of busy yesterday and didn't didn't get a chance to answer those comments but i did um, go through and read them all and note all of them so thank you so much for everyone who does take the time i'll be back on that case here this morning let's uh, take a look at some stocks that could be setting up and remember guys these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security and as a matter of fact you know i, I i've been getting some criticism because i show some bullish stocks um during the day in a bearish market now i want to be very very clear here and I've been pretty clear about this I am predominantly bearish in the market as a matter of fact I um, I'm holding bearish trades that are extremely profitable and the money that I've made this year which has been beautiful um, has all been basically to the bearish side of the market but I understand that there's folks that just don't like to trade trade short um, trade to the downside of the market and want to trade to the upside so I do try to provide a bit of a mix in here now speaking of that mix let's take a look at some stocks that if you want to trade long are on the short side of the market take a look at um, like PSQ now PSQ is an inverse ETF on the market and you can see this is broken through resistance here in the chart um, after such a strong quick rally to the upside I wouldn't want to chase that remember one of my rules is I want to buy stocks at or near price support not as we stretch out here a long ways away from a support level so let's let wait and see if we get a little bit of a rest maybe a pullback in PSQ for that next opportunity to the upside if you'd rather be in the S&P 500 take a look at SH an inverse ETF and you can see we're very very close in this trend to breaking through that resistance here in the chart and offering some more upside opportunity but a little rest or pullback would get us a lower risk entry into the trade so keep an eye on that there's also um, RWM RWM would be for the rough these are inverse ETFs that are one for one meaning they're not heavily leveraged like the double and triple leveraged ETFs out there that can be rather dangerous due to the volatility that we're seeing in this market so RWM um, as you can see we're struggling to break through and this is the Russell's been the strongest of the indexes um, so a rest or pullback though holding into that trend could be an upside opportunity and then um, last but not least um, we should take a look at um, the Dow and DOG would be the choice there DOG having um, a one for one in the Dow and you can see that possibility that we could stretch up here and break through that resistance however a little rest or a little consolidation could give us a lower risk entry so keep an eye on some of those for those folks who want to be long here in the market now there's been lots and lots of conversation here recently about institutions putting out upgrades on companies and trying to promote boy these just have huge upside one of those was nvidia saying nvidia has a hundred percent upside well here's the thing i want you to be paying attention to when these news reports come out that um, these are all being upgraded and they've got great upside potential I would agree with that we're very very bearish in the market but I want you to take a look at what the actions are of the institutions remember institutions control more than 80 percent of the overall money in the market and although their analysts are coming out and saying oh this has got a great upside potential we are not seeing institutions by these companies 
So while they may be um, having um, maybe oversold, while they may have great upside potential eventually, we're not seeing institutions actually follow through with these comments. So be very, very careful. Remember, sometimes we have to read between the lines. As a matter of fact, it could also almost be read between the lines. We gave that upgrade so that we could get people to buy some of our stock so um, we can continue to push it down and lower our risk. So watch that closely. You wanna be a little bit careful in a market like this and continue to move with the downtrend predominantly in these stocks. So what I would say here on stocks like Nvidia, even though they've had these great upgrades, as long as these downtrends continue, any rally back into those resistance levels would be an opportunity to pick up a short trade. And you may think, gosh, there's just no way these can continue to go down, but they are. You guys know that I've mentioned here recently that Microsoft, any rally back in Microsoft was an opportunity to short. And there it is. We rallied back up, we slammed into price resistance and downtrend, and now we've made new lows. So remember, as long as the trend remains down, the easiest easiest path to profit in this market is to trade to the downside. Now there are a couple of places where there might be some bright spots out there in the market and um, that's largely due to um, commodity prices and commodity things starting to perk up and show a little bit of strength here. Now the US dollar has created quite an, quite an interesting problem here for those commodity prices but Two days in a row now, we've seen the Bank of England um, injecting into the bond market. And that, as you can see, might be weakening the US dollar here a little bit. If the US dollar weakens, then you're going to want to be looking at um, um, the potential of oil prices, energy prices moving up with, um, with a weakening dollar. You'd want to be looking at um, commodity tracking ETFs that could move up and this is going to include things like um, um, steel, Cleveland Cliffs. This is a very bullish looking chart here trying to come out of a bottom. Notice we're breaking up through here. We're trying to hold the higher low. Um, obviously we still have a lot of work before this becomes an extremely bullish chart but you can see those patterns are starting to develop and if the dollar weakens I would expect to see um, commodities like these move up. Take a look at FCX. FCX is another one pushed up here recently broke through some resistance may hold a higher low in here we're challenging this downtrend so if the dollar weakens look for copper look for steel look for aluminum look for gold to maybe start moving up right now we've got gold futures trying to perk up just a little bit um, look for silver moving up other places take a look at some of the miners um, not SG AG. Um, take a look at um, some of the mining stocks starting to perk up here. So we have a silver miner breaking through some resistance, trying to hold some support in here. Keep an eye on that. Um, keep an eye on things like Barry Gold. Um, Barry Gold um, was showing some bullishness um, yesterday. Ended up pulling back by the end of the day. But as you can see here in this chart, we're breaking that downtrend. We may be trying to find a place to hold some support. Look for those bullish opportunities in places like that, particularly if the US dollar starts to pull back or slide down. Um, so watch those commodity areas for those opportunities. So with that, guys, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I want to wish you great results in your trading. Thank you so much for being here today, and thank you so much for for all your kind support and kind words on the channel. I truly, truly appreciate it. I wish you all the best, and I'll see you right back here, bright and early, Wednesday morning.